welcome back to my channel so today we're going to be doing something nice and different so i actually asked some questions and i got a number of questions and i'm really happy to be answering them in this video so i'm going to be talking about things on relationship my faith and also um my lifestyle in general and let's not waste much time let's just dive into this video now <laughs> So the first question here says, Totally love your eyes. Thank you very much. What choices have had the most impact in the quality of your life? It's a very good question. The first thing that comes to my mind is the choice of being a child of God, the choice of having a relationship with God. I think this has saved me from a lot of heartaches. It has saved me from making a lot of wrong decisions. And overall has helped me to be, be the version or the best version of myself that I am at the moment. I just think it's having a relationship with God. So question number two here says, what's the meaning of Keton? That's my middle name. Keton means by itself, it means never end in or never ending. But um, the full name is Anu Olua Keton. So that means the message of God never ends. I, I love that name so much. It's so deep, so rich and the message of God never just ends and speaking that over myself being called that every single day is very good because God's message will never end in my life so if you like that name you have to come to me I've pretended that name <laughs> I'm just joking but my name is really nice and I like it so thank you for asking um yeah for those of you that did not know so the question number three here from what I see is why so fine thank you um I don't know. <laughs> I guess God in his mercy made me like this and my parents happened to be themselves as well. So the miracle happened. So we thank God. We bless God. So the next question here is a skincare routine, please. <laughs> I'm not an expert when it comes to skin. I still have my acne battles here and there. And what I know how to do best is to edit very well and use good lighting when you use good lighting you have oily skin your editing skills are good i'm going to be looking flawless like me <laughs> but if you still want um a link for a uh, skincare routine i would leave one up here somewhere that you can watch and yeah i hope that answers your question and the video is relevant for you and your skin as well the other question is how can one be a christian and be modest I love your modesty thank you very much for saying you love my modesty but then you can't be a Christian and you it's mutually exclusive you know from being modest um, as a Christian the Bible calls us to moderation uh, moderation in everything it's not just in dressing yes it's good dressing is a is a big part of moderation and modesty but it comes in talking as well what do you say how do you say to people how do you talk to people do you talk down at them do you have an air of pride there has to be moderation in everything also the type of friends you keep the relationships you keep the holy spirit is there to constantly work on you work on your character on how you talk how you comport yourself what you say and how you behave and also there would not be excesses i hope i answered you and if you want like a deeper explanation we can talk one-on-one -on -one or we can chat in the comment section below how did you get to the point where god uses you you have to yield yourself to god you have to be the one to tell god god i'm ready for you to use me you have to be a willing and open vessel and you're asking the father to constantly refine you and use you god is not looking for vessels or people that are perfect he's the one that's going to help to qualify you to make you the person fit um for his purpose but you as well you just have to use yourself and, and another thing i would say that helped me to get to this point where god uses me is that um i wanted to know god for myself if you want god to use you you have to know him for yourself and be honest be open um god is not looking for you to come to him having everything perfect he wants you to come to him as you are and ask him to help you basically he's helped even the best of the best why won't he help you so that's my advice. parental marital advice be considered when getting married or is it better to keep things to yourself 
okay so i would say there are two things you know are you talking about parental advice or are you talking about parental content um if it's parental content definitely it's important for you to get your parents con your parents content when it's time for you to get married why do i say so you didn't grow up in the desert you didn't grow up anywhere you grew up in their house and they had spent some time of part of their life training developing you and it's out of respect and courtesy um to them for you to ask them for their consent you know and also it's it's also biblical why do i say so when rebecca in the bible wanted to get married she asked her parents for consent and then they gave their consent and then they blessed the marriage and blessed her now if it's not consent and is the advice as to who you should get married to my brother no please don't ask them <laughs> i don't think any human being should be the person you should be asking for advice when it comes to getting married to someone asking them whether you should get married to this person or that person no i think the person you should be asking is god and if God has told you what to do, then you go ahead with it and you do it with your chest. Yes, it said it. Um, everyone is going to have their own opinion about who you should marry, how you should marry, where you should marry, what you should do in life. And that's not going to go away. But um, I would say when it comes to deciding who you should stay with and be with, let that choice be led by God. Let that choice be directed by God. Now, would you every person in your family like the person maybe no but are you sure god is leading you then you have that back in because at the end of the day mommy is not going to live with that person daddy's not going to leave that person your sisters or brothers or aunties they're not going to be in the house with you and that person that they pick so even if they say oh, marry this person or marry that other person this girl is good that girl is good for you they're not going to be in the house they are not going to be facing life challenges with you so make sure you're making that choice by yourself but also put god on the picture let god lead and direct you so what do you miss the most about being single um i would say i miss my family and friend i miss italy to be honest um i'm also enjoying my life here so i said you can't have your cake you can't eat your cake and have it that's what they say so <laughs> that's what i would say so i i miss my family a lot i miss the weather there i miss the culture the food Ugh. yeah moving is not easy uh, no one tells you that but moving is not easy but we thank god i'm happy being married so i won't trade that for anything <laughs> as well so yeah What's your favorite book? My favorite book is As a Man Think It's Inside and Proper Dreaming Life. I'm someone that I'm always thinking I'm here for a reason and it may just be to touch a life, it may be to touch a community, it may just be for a certain group of people. I'm not here for everyone and also as you're thinking in your mind, what you think about yourself, what you think about who you are affects you you being able to fulfill your purpose and i think those two books for me have just been doing it over and over and again how did you know your husband was the right man <laughs> um number one i prayed and i asked god to lead and god led me to my husband and he's able to lead you as well if you're praying um to god and i knew he was the right man because the leading equals to what I saw in reality. It's it's good to watch and pray. So you pray <laughs> and then you need to watch as well. So, and I knew he was well because he was God-fearing, he was loving, he was understanding, he wanted me to be my own person. Um he allowed me to be myself. And I think that's what even makes our marriage work till today. What advice would you give to somebody to create a personal style? One, where do you work? Number two, where are you located in, in the world? Number three, where do you go in the week? How many places do you go? And number four, what makes you feel comfortable? Number five, what picture do you have of yourself when you want to dress? Do you want a clean, minimalist style? Or are you somebody that wants a lot of colors in your wardrobe or 
because then when you you pick what side you are on then you're able to create a, a, a wardrobe or a closet that serves you and not the other way around you know um what's your body type like as well what suits your body type that's another thing for you to keep in mind and also what colors work best on your body what doesn't there's so many sides to curating a personal style but i would say another thing i would say is just look for something that's uniquely you you have to be unique you have to be yourself you have to be creative and that comes with opening your heart to knowing that okay you're not like the other person or not like the, this other lady work with a personal stylist if that's something you have in your budget curate a wardrobe that serves you neutral color basic colors are your friends it helps you to be able to mix and match and have a capsule closet that serves you over and over and over again so that, why is it that some christians do not seem to get answers to prayers you're going to walk through tough times and i like what the bible says in psalms it says yay though i walk through the valley of shadow of death i will fear no evil so the word there that stands out to me is walk when you're in difficult times when you are in times when you're not hearing anything and you're praying you need to keep moving you need to be still but not static you need to be still but not passive you need to be still but active in faith that is time for you to build the muscles keep moving keep moving not moving away from god and doing your own thing still having your ears tuned to hearing what god wants you to do in that season but don't stand there don't sit there don't camp in the place uh, there's something you have to do if there is something you have to do that you can humanly do you should do your part and then god places for this we should not expect that god will come down from heaven to do a miracle when we haven't done our path you know so um keep praying don't lose hope don't lose um faith the answer is closer than you think um we all in our lives have things we're looking up onto god for and the thing is he's faithful he cannot deny himself he 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 is faithful and at the end of the day your steps your stops your rests your starts are all in his palm and he's able to make it all beautiful in his own time just trust him and he will do it what keeps you going slash inspires you what keeps me going the fact that i haven't gotten where i'm going <laughs> that's what keeps me going um the fact that um people nations other people are waiting for me on the other side of my obedience that keeps me going i'm not saying that every day i wake up feeling enthusiastic but because i know that it's much more than just me or my feelings or the fact that i have some failures along the way that keeps me going that keeps me pushing and thriving and doing what i need to do that's in my power what god will do is in his power but i need to do my own bit and my final um question is what is your favorite scripture my favorite scripture is and we know that all things work together for good to them that love god and are called according to his purpose and if you enjoyed this video please don't forget to give me a like thumbs up share comment my video so that everyone sees it and then we can grow as a community here together until next week or next time stay blessed be good and have a lovely day bye bye